What's going on guys? Got an album review right here for you. Gonna review the new KXM record Scatterbrain. So yeah, let's get on to it. It's a very interesting album. So the opening track, the title track, Scatterbrain. I'll put my review of that down in the description. I reviewed that one already, but I'm just gonna reiterate this nice slow opening, the you know, just the kind of little slow just as everything kind of, you know, swelled from the low volume is very, very nice. It was very, very grungy um, sounding to me. And uh, when everything picked up and it was like, a duh, duh, sounded very, very grungy, which I kind of like. You know, it was very, very, very interesting opening, very nice opening track. You know, the drums were re sounded really good on it. You know, I listened to it through my headphones. You know, the drums sounded really, really nice on this track. So, excellent opening track, and I'll put that one down in the description. Very, very nice. And then Breakout, I'll also put down in the description. I reviewed that already, but once again, just very, very groovy. Very just kind of, you know, just kind of made you want to move to it. You know, not necessarily headbang either, but just, you know, kind of, you know, get into it and feel it, you know. And it was kind of interesting how they had Scatterbrain, and then right after, they had Breakout, and they were kind of... A breakout was kind of um, kind of a rest and a break from Scatterbrain because you know Scatterbrain was more intense and you know kind of more crazy you know instrumentally and vocally and then you have Breakout come in and it's just kind of okay you can rest now you know it was very very interesting how they put those you know right after the other it was also really cool it was nice I was like wow the mood just kind of changed it kind of calmed down a lot so very very nice that was cool. And big sky country, heavy. You know, as soon as, as soon as the song started, it made me think of um, you know, a showdown between um, you know, a gentleman's duel, like a showdown between cowboys. You know, I pictured, um, you know, like those those shots where you can see that it's like over a hill and you see the person kind of rising above because they're walking up toward the hill and you see the dust, you know, kind of kind of um, hide them a little bit while they're walking. It really reminded me of that the intro for some reason, I'm not quite sure why, and you know, as the lyrics started to kick in, I just couldn't stop thinking about, you know, like Trump and, you know, everything he's doing and saying and all that kind of stuff, so very, uh, very, you know, politically charged, you know, and it was kind of, you know, an intense song instrumentally and, you know, lyrically, as well. it was lighter lyrically than it was instrumentally, but instrumentally it felt kind of intense, you know, in, uh, in an interesting way, so that was very, very nice, that, that was a really good song. And the ending of it segued perfectly into track four, which was Calypso. And as soon as Calypso started, I got this horror movie vibe, you know? And it went from, you know, the opening scene or the opening theme of a horror movie, and then when, like, the next riff kicked in, it went, like, into the chase scene of the horror movie. You know what I mean? So that's what the opening and then that next riff reminded me of. And the vocals on this one during the verse seemed really quiet. So it, it kind of seemed like the vocals, like during the verse, took a backseat to the instruments. But in this case, it wasn't really a bad thing. I didn't really mind it at all. Because the instruments really kind of... Um, they, they really kind of portrayed a very interesting mood, even you know with the vocals diminished, which I, I kind of enjoyed. And that was very interesting. But, yeah, the backing vocals were, were also used very, very nicely. You know, there were, there's more backing vocals in this song, I think, maybe than any of the other, you know, songs. And the way they were used for effect and atmosphere was really, really nice. I enjoy that a lot. So, excellent track there. And then, not a single word. It was probably the most diverse track musically. Because when it first started, I felt, you know, a punk vibe. And then, you know, the verse is just straight, you know, reggae. I mean, they go, they open with like a little punky kind of vibe and then go straight into reggae. And I was like, oh, wow, okay, that's, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. And then the chorus was very, very smooth, you know, and that's the best way I can describe it. It was just very, very smooth. It just is very, very, uh, very, very legato and just flowed really well and, just, and it went with the song extremely well in an interesting way. So, excuse me, so that, that, the chorus was just really smooth, you know, it was like melted butter, you know, <laughs> it was very, very smooth. 
and you know it gave off an old school vibe. The whole song gave off a very a very old school vibe. I can't quite place the decade, but just throughout the whole song, you know, it had that it had like an old school kind of punky vibe to it. Then you know like classic reggae, and then the chorus was just a whole nother a whole nother kind of you know thing in there, and it made the song feel very diverse and just very very old school and also very smooth you know and like genre wise as far as like taking the you know, sounds of different genres and incorporating the sounds of different genres this is probably the most diverse song instrumental wise and it was just very very interesting to listen to very very well put together the lyrics are really nice and it's probably my favorite track off the album just really 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 well done you know all these different feels and you know, everything flowing together well and it was just really, really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. And then we go into Obsession. The drums in the opening were like, awesome. Good job, Ray. They did a great job there. And it was just, you know, a hardcore stalking song, you know. It was very, very interesting. I wasn't, I didn't expect it to be about that. But it was very, very interesting subject matter. Very interesting lyrics. And the thing about it was, it, it, it was it was a, a song about stalking, but it never seemed super dark or super evil. But it had this, I think maybe the way the vocals were delivered and the way the instruments were written, you know, it had this dark air to it, but it never seemed overly intense, you know, at least to me. So that was a, that was very interesting. It was, it was an interesting little uh, contrast there you think it would be a little more intense, a little bit darker, but it never seemed to go too dark, you know, to me, but it always had this, like, eerie kind of, you know, undertone to it, which, you know, it's about stalking, so, of course, uh, yeah, I, the bass, the bass was very, very nice in this song, that one little part that Doug did was very, very nice, I enjoyed it, this guitar solo was awesome, very, very nice, fit the mood very well, you know, and flowed with the song very well. I'd like to see a music video for this, and that'd be interesting. And see how, you know, they make a music video for this, because they make some pretty interesting music videos. You know, believe me, go watch the uh, Gunfight music video. That was nice. Okay, and then we go to Noises in the Sky. Guitar intro, awesome. So this one was pretty much about Doomsday. But it wasn't just about Doomsday, it was kind of, you know, Doomsday from a, a religious perspective, because, you know, it was talking about the horns and, you know, the second coming. So I was like, oh, okay, so throwing some, you know, a Christian more in here. Very, very nice. Very, very interesting track, you know. It kind of reminded me, you know, more towards the end, more so. It kind of reminded me, especially when the, like, the na-na's came in, it very much reminded me of, you know, just being in, like, church, you know. It reminded me, you know, like just singing hymns and preaching, you know, when the, when the pastor's getting into, into his mood and he's, you know, like, come on, let's let the Lord in, you know, all that really good stuff. It reminded me a lot of that, so I felt like I was just kind of like in church, you know, during like praise and worship, you know, a very extended version of praise and worship. And another thing about this song was it was a, it was a song about doomsday, but it was, I want to say calm, you know. It wasn't, you know, super intense, super, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, fire's raining down, blah, 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 blah. It was just, you know, is it, is it a warning? You know, it sounds like horns, second coming, you know. It wasn't one of those Doomsday songs where it makes you, like, fear Doomsday. It was just, you know, is this happening? You know, some say this, some say that. You know, it, was, it, was, it had more of a calm vibe to it than, you know, most songs about Doomsday you hear these days. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, that one just made me feel kind of like I was, you know, in church, which was uh, kind of cool how they were able to, like, capture that. So, good job with that one. And then, Panic Attack. The vocal delivery on this one I really, really liked. It was very, you know, because some songs Doug uses, you know, some effects on his voice, and for those songs it works, and then for some he uses, you know, his clean voice, like he did on, you know, not a single word, and then whatever. And if you, if they, they really know which song to use clean and which one to use effects on. And I really liked his vocal delivery on this one. It sounded very smooth, very natural, um, just very, very cool. You know, throughout the song I was just picturing someone waking up, 
you know, in a in a straitjacket in a white room, just in just, you know screaming and just like going nuts and whatever. And the song also kind of um kind of like got me on a personal level because I was actually up last night for a good amount of time because uh, something happened, you know, a couple of days ago. I was super upset about, and I wrote this set of lyrics in you know ten or so minutes. And it was kind of the same kind of topic and message as this, except the person who was suffering like never actually escaped it or got out of it. It was kind of like, you know, it's like a, it's like a pretty dark set of lyrics or whatever. And so it kind of spoke to me personally a little bit because, you know, that's kind of you know what what I was going through. You know what happened to me during the time, and so because like you know I got home, it was St. Patrick's Day. You know, played D and D. You know, had some fun with my buddies, and then I got home, and I was still upset about the thing that happened. You know, like on Thursday, and you know I just really couldn't sleep, and you know I started you know writing some music on Guitar Pro, and then you know I stopped, and then like the lyrics just came to me, and I wrote them all down on my phone, and so. This kind of, you know, spoke to me just on like a personal type of level as well, so, um, it's really nice. The drum fills at the end were great, I really loved them, didn't expect those either. You know, you guys said that as I was like, oh, I didn't expect those drum fills. You know, the drum fills are great at the end, but this, this song was really nice, I enjoyed it, you know, further, further, you know, helped me as well, so, yeah, good one. That's yeah, never enough. Um... Okay, so the first note I have written down for this track is Rally the Bikers. <laughs> because when I first heard it and it started playing, it just reminded me of, you know, that like slow motion kind of scene where like a bunch of bikers get up out of the bar and they go and walk out to, you know, do whatever they need to do to fight whatever they need to fight or whatever. So yeah, that's what that's what that's what it reminded me of when I first heard it, you know, just like rally the bikers, you know, cool. And then, right after that, right after the lyrics started, I was like, people are satisfied and unselfish. I mean, people are unsatisfied and selfish. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So, you know, got that little bit from the lyrics there, you know, like, whatever we get something is never enough, whatever we give is never enough, so not only are we selfish when we get something, we always want more, like, when we give, you know, whatever we give to somebody else, they always want more, and they're never satisfied. So I was like, oh, wow, this song is, like, true with balls. And so, yeah, very nice, I like it, very very good, very good grooves, very good lyrical message. And I wrote down, like, the la-la-la-la-las, those were nice, too. I don't remember how exactly how it went, but when the when the laws came in, uh, that really kind of, like, you know, twinged my ear. I was like, oh, cool, I like that. So, awesome track, again, of course. And Ten True Deceivers. Um, first, I thought it was about, like, false prophets and everything like that. But then it turned into something like, not that, you know, it's like, it's like because oh, I see you and you're different. I'm like, oh, okay, so wait, this, this isn't about like, you know, false preachers or whatever. So he's like, I used to believe in like all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So interesting, uh, interesting kind of topical shift there. But, you know, I really kind of got, um, really kind of just, like, let the song mellow into me and, um, kind of got lost in it, but I really kind of, you know, like, paid attention more when you say, you know, right versus moral, you know, especially, it kind of reminded me again of Trump, you know, how he says all these things that aren't true, but people still believe him anyway, and, you know, people think, some people think that doing the right thing isn't necessarily the moral thing, or vice versa and it, there's this weird um mindset in some people where they something they're told to do or something that they they need to do is you know told to them that it's right but they have this moral conflict about it and they feel that it's wrong and that was you know that was kind of cool I, I that that really made me like think for a second i was like well right versus moral and i just wrote down right versus moral so that was very, that was a very interesting part of the song. But yeah, for the most part, I just kind of, you know, kind of got lost in this and let it mellow into me a little bit. But uh, yeah, and then of course it transitions very, very nicely into Stand. And 
Oh yeah, Modern America, definitely. This song was pretty much Modern America, like out the wazoo. You know, like cops, pedestrians, you know, the colors and the rainbow and the freaks. Like, you're pretty much, you know, touching on Michael Brown and Trayvon Martin and all that kind of stuff. And all the LGBT community fights and all on all the stuff that they're dealing with. All the transgender people out there. So this song was pretty much just, you know, just pretty much about modern America in, in general. You know, the Unipart, you know, it says, into the streets. You know, just because you stand for something doesn't mean you stand against someone else, you know, which is another mentality that's a problem, you know, in America and, you know, other places where, like, you're for this one thing, so people know you have to be against all this other stuff, and that's definitely not the case, you know, and it was just, you know, standing for something or for anything, you know, a lot of people just sit idly by and don't do anything like oh it'll work itself out or oh they'll they'll work it out i don't have to do anything you know they just sit idly by and then they'll let things happen so and that was uh this is a very very uh interesting interesting track i just couldn't stop thinking of like america during the whole time i'd like to see a music video for this one too very very interesting to see a music video for this one and then we have together and as soon as I heard it, I just wrote Battle Stations, because, you know, he had Stan, and I found it funny how they had Stan and then Together, when they could have just had Stan Together and had them be, like, one kind of, you know, sequel track to each other or whatever, but be the same song, but it's probably good they split it up, that song would have been, like, 13 or something minutes long, but, so down Battle Stations, and... I thought it was going to be more of a happiest track, you know, like, maybe the sequel to Stan, but in a way where everything's kind of going well, you know, but it really wasn't like that at all, it was just, uh, it was just still kind of intense, and it just wasn't really, you know, after Stan, it wasn't really what I thought it was going to be, but still a very, very nice track, I like that, I was a surprise, so that was a good thing, very nice. And then you got Angel, and as soon as it started, I just wrote down country music, because that's what it reminds me of, you know. The original country music, too, not, you know, the current, you know, poppy kind of country music. But it was very, very nice. It was, um, it was a, it was a calm ending to an otherwise very intense and very frenetic, um, album. And it, it was a very nice foil to the opening song, Scatterbrain. I didn't expect I, didn't, I, I expected it to be kind of, you know, a little fast and everything like that, but it was just very kind of, um, more mellow, and it never really, you know, got, you know, too intense or anything like that, so it was just a very, very nice closing, uh, track, and just a very nice closing chapter to the book that was this album. And so now I'm going to talk about the album as a whole here. Very, very nice, you know, I didn't really, uh, this is actually the first KXM record I ever heard, you know, I saw Scatterbrain, and I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool, and I was like, wow, okay, I want to do this album now, and it was just very, very nice, you know, I, I, I like Korn, I like King's X, you know, I like Lynch Mob and everything like that, so it was very interesting to see, you know, these, especially with Ray Luzier, with these guys who, you know, you know a little, a little, like, you know, older, and, you know, very, they're all different genres, you know, King's X, and, you know, uh, Lynch Mob, and Dawkin, and Korn, and, you know, like, Ray played with David Lee Roth, too, so it was just very interesting to see these guys and these genres come together and make some music, and I think one of the things that makes it amazing, and I couldn't stop thinking about this while I was listening to the album, is all the, the tones of the instruments, because, you know, you have Ray's drums, and then you have... Doug's bass and George's guitar, and George's guitar has this dry sound to it, where it, it, I don't know, it's like, it's very interesting, it kind of reminds me of Dimebag sound a little bit, it's very dry, you know, crisp, and sharp, and then you have like Doug's bass, which somehow just fits well with it, like, I don't even know how, it's, it's so interesting, because he has, like, you know, a, a, a bass tone closer to Frank Bellows, you know, and then you just have Ray's drums, and it's, it's like, it, it's like you have two, you know, classic musicians with, you know, it's like you have two, two, like, you have a classical guitar player and a classical bass player, and then you have, you know, a modern metal drummer, 
and just the way they write music and intertwine their um, their tones and you know their parts are just so amazing to me like I really I really can't fathom how they do it you know it's just very interesting to me and that that's one of the things that made the music great was just the way their tones combined and what they did you know and how they bounced off each other was just really interesting and it, you, you just hear it and it's amazing how all those tones just go so well together and when you wouldn't really, really think that was the case and of course all the backing vocals and all the choirs and just all the you know all the backing vocals that they do with Doug and just his voice really 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 works well over all the instruments which is another interesting thing because you really wouldn't think that either any of these guys' tones or really styles would necessarily complement each other in such a, a great way but it does and it sounds amazing this is definitely a really good album and i enjoyed it a lot more than i thought i would you know i'm not saying i, I didn't have been enjoyed at all but it was very it was much more pleasing to my ears and my brain than i thought it was really going to be you know but um i will leave the links from my other reviews down in the description definitely go go check out this album give it a listen if you like it buy it certainly glad i did you know, very, very, very surprising album. You know, definitely going to be an underdog album for sure. You know, probably not going to get too much press or anything like that. But very, very nice. Uh, if you guys like these videos, leave me a comment, a like, or you can subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and rock on.